still want some, I'm sure I'll donate again. But they may not have t-shirts like last time I did both of those. All right. Third thing. Okay. So I got all discombobulated because I left. My notebook in my car. All right. Uh, Leila? Aliana? <laughs> Amy? Who's done better? Uh, I, I, or Abigail? Thumbs up? Uh, Nehemiah? How long? Uh, Antonio? Antonio? Uh, Renee? Uh, Mon? Peter? Alexander? Uh, Farah? Farah? Nolan? Amber? Uh, Allison? Krishna? Krishna? Uh, Maya? He was a, he didn't have Uh, I N S H I R Inshra. Yes, no? Inshra? Inshra. Danielle. Do it. Do it. Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Oh, so many people, Miguel. Uh, Ma excuse me, Mahin, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm so sorry. Uh, Samantha? <laughs> Corey? <laughs> Corey? <laughs> Where is everybody? Bianca? Uh, Harim? Huh, honey? <laughs> and Camille, not here. All right. Okay, so I'm 
All right, guys, uh, what I decided to do is y'all are going to have a quiz, uh, like I said, tomorrow, um, or on Friday, not tomorrow, or that always is the last class in the book. Uh, you will not have a quiz um, over this lecture that we're currently doing, but our next quiz will be at the end of uh, the Great Transformation. All right? And basically what you guys need to know so that you can grow, go over the opposition to Thomas Jefferson. We mentioned one of them earlier today, the tertium quids. Uh, know also about like um, the Essex Junto. You said the Essex Junto? Huh? I'll give you the same one, please. Sure, the Essex Junto. Can you read the first one, please? Sure, the tertium quids. Led by John Randall. Next, know, know about that rascally rabbit, Aaron Burr. Know what he did, why the Dem Republican Democrats didn't like him anymore. What finally got him into trouble and they put him on trial for? Know about things that are going on in the West? So that would be like the Prophet and Tecumseh. It's those things that led to the War of 1812, not the harassment on the high seas. And know why, like Western settlers and politics, why were they so gung-ho about a war with Britain? What did they think they'd get out of it? Why weren't, you know, we barely, by the skin of our teeth, had beat them only 40 years prior. And now we think, yeah, we got to go at it. What were they going to get out of the war? Is that right? Is that right? Now, the next thing I'd like, let's see, do, do, do. All right, as y'all know, what's going on up at college? Ba -ba -ba. Uh, next thing, big thing, is the talent show. If y'all can go to that, that's in the John uh, Anthony Theater. Uh, that's going to be next Monday. Uh, Distracted Driver is next Tuesday from 11 to 2. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. Uh, you can do. It's going to be on the first day of your break. Sure. Uh, go to the World Cup watching party um, on Monday, the 21st. Y'all are out of school because that's the beginning of your holy day. But the holiest of all holies is football, European style. So go check out America and the World Cup. La Copa. And on the 28th, there's going to be bull riding, which I think will be fun. So I'd say if only if you're over 17, go check that out. But even if you're under, go check it out. Who knows? Uh, the day after that is pancakes and PJs from 12.30 to 2.30. Don't know if time-wise some of y'all be able to make it. But if so, it should be fun. Uh, dodgeball, can't do it because of time, can't do it because of time. And of course, the 5K race. All right, now I just sent you guys out an email in regards to this, which is actually a pretty cool deal. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I'm having it. Basically, it's a student writing contest for the Working Class Studies Conference. And basically, they're accepting papers of any genre related to the theme of the working class. Uh, submissions should include research essays, which no one wants to do, historical overviews, which no one wants to do, memoirs, if you're writing a thing about yourself, you could do that, or creative uh, literary criticism, which no one wants to do, um, but creative nonfiction, where you could tell your story of like, guys, for some of you, your grand, I know that my mom, so I'm talking about y'all's moms. Y'all's moms were the first ones in Texas that could have a bank account in their own name. 
Y'all's moms were the first ones that could have a mortgage in their own name. Okay? And guys, you know, and if you wanted, if you were like a first generation American or newly arrived, that would be good. If second generation, that's just invalid. Some people think, ooh, they're going to like women's stories more than men. No! If you're a man, you're just as important. You have a story to tell, and that story is historically important, just as it is with women. You might want to talk about uh, how um, the whole coronavirus thing affected you trying to get a summer job or trying to get any employment whatsoever. You know, the limitations that were put on you that were outside of your control. You know, this would be something that would, oh, and by the way, most important to you guys, cash prizes. First prize gets 250 bucks. Second prize gets 200 bucks. Third prize gets 150 bucks. So basically, if I were you, over your Thanksgiving weekend, you're going to be with family anyway. Might want to talk to your aunt. Might want to talk to your uncle. Um, write something. Okay, four pages long. You might get rich out of it. You might not. But even if you don't uh, win anything, you can at least write down on your college applications that you participated in a college writing contest that you submitted, that it was accepted. Oh, and the top three that are accepted will be presenting at a conference um, on February 16th. I believe that's a Friday of next year. So if you actually won something, you'd go and present it to people that are older than y'all. But that would look beyond brilliant on a college app. And, you know, you're just telling your story. Hey, this is what happened to me. This is what I think. This is how I'm different. This is how I'm similar. So, seriously, guys, I give thought to that. If you do write it over, and guys, sadly, almost every year I've brought this up to students, and I don't think a single student has taken me up on this. But if y'all are the class that finally does, um, the deadline for your essay to be in is Friday, December 9th by 5 o'clock. So, just write your story. That's creative nonfiction or a memoir. Okay? Do, do, do. Now, let's see. I got some of these out of the way. Amy? Lena? Lena? No, you're not Alina. Alina? Okay. Oh, is she that one? Yeah. Okay. I thought she went to the nurse. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Aliana? Oh. There you go. Uh, Abigail? Uh, Helena? That's you. You're welcome. Uh, am I? Allison? Mahin? Miguel? And Samaya? And guys, I'm working, I've got some of them graded, but I've got so many papers right now. It's insane. And by the way, if I didn't pass, if I pass everybody back their paper that I have a graded grade book. If y'all checked your class, I mean, you might have a grade and I might still have your paper. Okay? So far, everybody's been doing great. So, we have no questions about what we need to know for our quiz. That's all good, right? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. So, let's get on with the wide, wide world of American history. Now, uh, did we get to McCullough v. Maryland? No. I... Okay. Is this 
where we stopped, or was it this one? This one? That's what I thought. And so basically, guys, if you remember, this was the case uh, where uh, Maryland tried to tax it when people were taking money out of their accounts at the National Bank. Uh, McCullough refused to do that. He was a bank teller. Uh, he basically fought against his firing. It goes all the way to the Supreme Court. And he wins because basically states cannot tax federal institutions. The feds are over the states. And many states create the federal unit, so just one cannot tax it. I know y'all have the fire as we're talking about contract law. So we'll take it up a notch even, and we'll talk about Gibbons v. Ogden. Now, uh, basically, Gibbons v. Ogden has to do with technology. Basically, Robert Fulton had created a steam engine that was small enough, light enough, and powerful enough to propel a boat. Please put away other books and pay attention to class if you would. And, basically, uh, he got a license to take people from New York City to New Jersey, and New Jersey to New York City. Well, uh, no, Ogden got that. Gibbons, um, by the way, uh, when Robert Fulton developed this in order to make it, to make the ferrying more profitable, they gave Robert Fulton a few federal licenses of taking passengers from New York to uh, New York to New Jersey. Gibbons come, is it Gibbons or Ogden? No, it's Ogden. Ogden was the new guy that came in with the state licenses and was basically stealing Gibbons' uh, business. He was charging less. And Gibbons was hacked off about it because he had the federal licenses and so he basically took Ogden to court saying, you can't steal my business like that. And the federal government agreed, saying that the federal government is superior to state governments in matters of interstate commerce. Indeed, it's only if you're taking a business from uh, one state to the next that the federal government can get involved, because that's interstate commerce. If it's all just in Texas, like I think, all the HEBs are only in Texas. I might be wrong. There might be some in Mexico. But I don't think they're in other states. Which meant that HEB's business is HEB's business. Oh, and by the way, they're opening up their second store here in Plano. Don't know where. But it's an excellent place to work. Ready to go to the next one? So now that we've got the business side laid established, now we're going to get the political side established. Uh, James Monroe and the nationalist uh, agenda. Basically, the Monroe administration resolved remaining differences with England, like the Rush Bago Agreement reduce the size of the British and American fleets on the Great Lakes, which cost both countries less money, which they were excited about. We we're kind of agreeing to be friends. By the Convention of 1818, it settled issues of American fishing rights on the Atlantic, pretty much set the border with Canada at the 49th parallel, even though, guys, if you actually look at it, the border with Canada is actually very, very jagged. But it's pretty much along the 49th parallel. And both America and England agree that they're both going to um, occupy Oregon. Now what about Spain? Well. Let's get into Spain. Everybody got it? Oh, hold on. Don't be so excited. 
You got a game tomorrow? Today. Today? You got blue because it's supposed to rain bad for you. Do y'all have an athletic center you play at or something? Where are your games? Kimbera Stadium. I don't know where that is. It's in Murphy by McMillan. Okay. So you do have kind of like an athletic center. Oh, yeah. Ready for the next? What about Spain? Because we're Texans. We better know. Well, Spain and the Adams Owens Treaty, it kind of settled where the boundaries between French Louisiana and Louisiana Purchase and what Spain owned. Basically, uh, America, because of uh, La Salle, who had landed in Spain and he was French, we claimed land all the way down to the Rio Grande River. Spain was like, yeah, right, uh, I don't think so. They moved it back up to the Sabine, where it currently is, and the Red River. And uh, while they're having, this is in the Adams-Owens Treaty. Adams is the American ambassador, Owens is the Spanish. If you listen to Adams, he never told Andy Jackson to do this. If you listen to Andy Jackson, Adams told him to do this. What is it? Well, basically, while they're sitting down and having this meeting, Andy Jackson uses a Native American attack that took place 54 miles away, and they ducked back down into Spain. Because, guys, they crossed the border. The Americans can't go in there and catch us. <laughs> well, they're not Andy Jackson. Who goes ahead? He invades Spain. He takes over Pensacola, St. Mark's, the capital of St. Augustine. He hangs three Indian agents. So basically, Spain is in American hands. And that's when America goes to Spain and says, hey, um, why don't you guys give us Florida? And to sweeten the deal, we forgive $5 million of their debt. In return, we get Florida. We don't get uh, land all the way to the Rio Grande. We do have to have a shortened um, Louisiana purchase. But, like I said, Spain relinquished their claim to Oregon. We get Florida. We get a fine boundary with uh, our southern neighbor. That was pretty much a win-win deal. It is. You read these. Good joy. All right, next, the Monroe Doctrine. Basically, Britain comes to us proposing an alliance. Why? Because all of these countries that are in New Spain are having revolution against their mother country. And so basically, other European nations might come in and take these places over. So England comes to us and says, hey, what do you say, us together, we come in and we say that there's going to be no European involvement with any of these countries. You know, they can't come in and take them over. And Monroe kind of sits back and thinks about it, and he says, well, sounds like a good idea, but uh, England, you're European. So I'll tell you what, America is going to do it by itself. And basically, we said that the United States of America would oppose intervention by Europeans in Latin America. Now, guys, you want to know the funny truth behind this? America, at this time, we couldn't really enforce that. That was just us talking. The reason why we could say this is because we knew that England wouldn't allow any other European nation over here. So it was kind of like our heads up. If anything, it was our heads up to England of hands off. As well as everybody else in Europe. And we do a pretty good, good job of keeping this until the Civil War. America is kind of distracted. France comes in and takes over Mexico. Puts in an emperor. Not a good deal. Ready for the next slide? Dynamic growth and political consequences. All right. 
Now, uh, you guys should be incredibly excited that you're alive right now, you're getting ready to go to college right now, that your future is bright before you. Why? What's the economy like? Yeah, the economy's crap. Inflation's mad. But guess what? That only happens for a little while. And it's the decisions you make now and the choices you make now. Because guys, like I said, if you have all this, you're going to have companies that are going bankrupt. Like, say there was a family pizza. Uh, there used to be a pizza place. I'm wondering if it's still open. I like them. I went by. I thought it closed. Y'all ever heard of Jet's Pizza? It's over by Plano Senior. Anyway, it's a little family-owned pizza place. Been there since the 1970s. Uh, kind of has a special relationship with Plano Senior. I think they closed down. Well, I don't know. They may not have. But, what does that mean? What does Plano need? Another pizza place. Guess who can open it? You can. Opportunity, opportunity. Panic of 1819. Guys, basically this was caused by unsafe financial practices that swept the country after 1800. I mean, the land ordinance of 1800, liberalized by the land ordinance of 1804, led to risky farm purchases. I mean, money was pouring in from Europe due to the Napoleonic Wars. And they needed our food. So guys, it was like you couldn't help but make money during that time. So land spe speculators extended credit to poor credit risks. Back then you needed $262.40 minimum to buy 160 acres of land. If you didn't have all that money at once, they take a little bit down, you pay a little bit down. Next harvest, you pay me more, kind of like a mortgage. Yeah, the banks giving away liberal, because it seemed like, hey, the good times are never going to end. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And guys, I don't know when the real estate thing is going to bubble, it's going to explode, but the cost of houses are so incredibly high. That can't last either. It won't go down to where it was, but can't stay that elevated. Oh, well, you know what the thing that sucks about, like say you had a house when you moved to Plano 10 years ago, it was only worth $225,000. Now it's worth four hundred and fifty. dollars Are you going to sell it? No. Because what are you going to be able to buy? You're going to have to move all the way up to Melissa or down to Red Oak if you want to try, or Navarro, to try to have the same kind of real estate. Now, everything seemed like it was going gangbusters. Then you start having things happen, like wars in Europe end. Meaning all of a sudden now, they can grow their own food. We don't, we don't need your grain. We don't need your corn. Thanks. Hey, hey. Hey. And the Latin American countries that are in revolution, because as soon as uh, Napoleon had taken over France and put in his brothers, all of a sudden all the guys in Mexico, all the guys in Colombia, all the guys, hey, we can keep our own money. We don't have to ship this overseas. And then they're able to bring the king back, the royalty back into Spain, and he's like, hey, I want that money back, and they're like, mm, 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 no. I think we want to be free now. Thank you, though. So all that money that was flowing into Europe is gone. So they don't, because of all these Latin American revolts, so Europe doesn't have the extra money anyway to buy our goods. So as you can guess, here in America, the consequences are terrible. Everybody get all that? Do I need to go back or are we okay? Do I need to go back? Okay. Basically, America enters the worst depression it had ever